Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So today I thought I'd do a review on some Princeton Aqua Elite travel brushes. This is not a sponsored post. I just bought these for myself recently for my travels coming up. And I think I would wanted to share how I like painting with them. I think they're great because they kind of just like the regular brushes, only their travel brushes are very convenient. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Let me know if you have any lovely travel products you like to use for watercolor. I'm also using um, an Arsh travel watercolor pad as well. You know, so just leave a comment below to tell me if you are, you know, finding any cool products that you like. I would love to hear about them. Also check out my Patreon. I have ad free videos, traceables, exclusive tutorials, and a live stream on the top tier. It's just a place people go and support my channel. I also have a Facebook page where we do weekly challenges and giveaways monthly. It's just a place people go to go for my Patreons to like support each other and talk about what they're struggling with and what they're painting, etc, etc. So without, and you can find that link in my description box. Without further ado, let's get painting. Oh, and by the way, I didn't even mention we're doing the super bloom because <laughs> the super bloom is everywhere in California right now, as well as other uh, states like Texas and Arizona, but it's just amazing. And I had to do a super bloom picture. So let's get painting a super bloom. Okay, so for this tutorial, let me go over the supplies. And because it is a tutorial about using some travel, you know, watercolor supplies, and mostly for the travel um, Princeton Aqua Elite travel case. So it comes in, I got this, you know, it's not that expensive, I think, in my opinion, for what it is. I mean, there are Escoda ones that are 120 something dollars. There's the other one that I did uh, post, and I have a link for that's much cheaper. This is around 55 and you're getting four brushes. So not bad. And what I like about it, it's just like the Princeton brushes, but only the travel. So you pull this out and it comes in a, uh, a four, a six, an eight, and a 10. I wish it had a 12 actually, it doesn't. So, but look at, this is so lightweight. You pull it apart and you put it in here and that's how you would close it. Right now it's open like this. So you could um, just see how it looks. Oops, I don't want to wreck my brush. But you put them in here just like this. Take off this part. It would come like that. Um, they're so lightweight. The ones that I had bought before are much heavier. And it makes a huge difference, I think. And then this is kind of like magnetic. It folds in. Nice. Heavy duty. The other one I have has a like a leather pouch. It's a little lighter the pouch. This is a little heavier. Maybe if you want to switch it out. But I think it's a great value for you know you're getting four brushes for fifty five on the Amazon shop that I got mine in. Um, the shops vary, and then on the art supply stores, I think they're more expensive. So I think I found it cheaper on Amazon actually. I have this. This uh, travel journal that I bought a while ago, and I did a tutorial on that, as you can see, from like around Thanksgiving time. But today we're going to use it for a tutorial on painting. As you can see, this little photograph, and I gave you the reference. Super Bloom. You've all over the news. You see the Super Blooms. Um, I have friends that are out there. They're taking photographs. I have my son out there taking photographs in the mountains. Um, it's amazing. So I went on Pixels and see. I found a nice picture of. Super blooms. Um, I wish I was out there taking photographs. I guess they're all there's they're everywhere. It's in Texas for the bluebells. They're in Arizona. They're everywhere in the desert. So it's amazing. If you're out there, take some photographs, play around, blah blah blah. So really, we just broke it down. I just I'm not using the woman in the photograph. I'm just I just drew just simple little lines to indicate the mountain. See right here, right here here and I just freehanded it I didn't actually trace it or anything so it's not exact and that's fine you just make, and you may just may want to draw the, these little indentations where the mountains kind of fold in and this is really a tutorial on using this brushes and some wet on wet and kind of bleeding in the color so you can out here you got this really vibrant like purple lavender in with the orange and if you don't do it correctly um, it could get pretty muddy and not pretty so there's tricks to do that. And I'm gonna show you how to do that so it doesn't get muddy. And we'll play around with these brushes. 
obviously I'm not going to have this palette out in the field. <laughs> I'll have my smaller one. Um, so, you know, for now we're just doing for the tutorial, tutorial purposes, the bigger palette. But if I had my smaller one here, it's probably around my house somewhere. Um, I'll do a tutorial on that. I'm actually going to show you my setup um, that I bought that I'm going to bring with me when I go on my travels next month. I can't believe it's next month. <laughs> so here I'm using, <clears throat> excuse me, the number 10 travel brush. And the sky can be any, you know, it's just like a basic blue, really, in my opinion. It can be any sky you want. And since the, these colors are so bright, either you make the sky muted or bright, and make the whole thing bright. I'm going to play around with using some ultramarine blue. You could add, you know, it's very dull from the, also from the printout. Let me touch a paint gray in there. Make it not super bright. And I water this down to a tea consistency. Now, also when you're traveling and you're getting very wet on wet, it can buckle a little bit. So try not to get super wet. You know, I wouldn't wet this whole thing. I'm just gonna go in with my blue. It's wet on dry, so it's arch paper. And you can use go like that. See how you can hold your brush sideways. Get that nice dry brush effect. Gonna have to add more water. But the brush feels fantastic. I love it. And you can see how you can just go like this and you get that dry brush. If you wanna have the clouds kind of in there, you wanna get a little bit brighter, add some blue top. This is a great little travel journal from Arsh. It's hard to get really nice paper in a sketchbook slash travel journal. It's impossible. So basically it's like arch paper that's smaller in a, you know, a little spiral bind. It's not really like a true journal. Um, I had bought several different ones. I bought a Bohang one. To, um, I was kind of disappointed in it actually. I really wanted a cold press journal that's really nice. So I'm just filling this in. Try not to get, I'm trying not to get a lot of watered paint on here because I know that it will kind of like buckle a little bit and it takes time to dry. Obviously it will dry flat if you're compressing the pages and you have it in between things. So eventually it would go flat. Just filling in this ultramarine blue. And if you want to like make it more blue, blue, I'm gonna go grab some more ultramarine blue. And just kind of bleed that in up top. You can lift it up now that it's wet and have it bleed down. So if you're outside painting and doing some things like if you're actually at the Super Bloom place <laughs> and you want to do a quick little painting, these brushes are so great. They're so lightweight. Try to have less things to bog you down if you're traveling, if you're bringing things in your suitcase. So they just fill that in. Just a simple blue sky. I'm really, not really concentrating on how perfect the sky is. Just filling in this. And you know, it's a smaller brush, so a little more concentrated. There we go. Now, for the actual blooms and the greens, you should have your colors kind of all mixed up at once. So I'll mix up some greens. And it's like a really kind of muted deep greens. So I've got Prussian blue. I'll grab my Cabin Yellow Deep. It's still even bright there. And I'll add like a little burnt umber, get a little more muted, a little more blue. You're playing around with all those colors. Mix them together, get that deep green. I need a medium green. You can take that same green Add some more yellow to it. Get a medium green. Grab more yellow, it's bright. See, a little more brown. Get that medium green. Obviously we have oranges. Now, I pulled out my brilliant orange paint. <laughs> I have hardly any left, but you can make the orange. Um, and also cadmium red lights nice. And the cadmium yellow deep. I mean, it's practically cadmium yellow deep all over the paper. And you get these bright, bigger ones down below. If you want just to draw them in, you can. But I think you just paint them. It's just easier. 
and of course the purple. So for the purple, I would use ultramarine blue, right? And it's a really bright purple. You could use magenta. I have this, I have either bright rose or even opera would make a really bright purple because opera itself is almost like a neon color. It's like a pinky purple. Make this beautiful purple. So how do we do this? You start off slow. I'm still using the 10 because I feel like I don't really need a tiny brush. I'm not going to do the, the mountains in the back because I'm waiting for this, this part to dry. I would start off with the medium green, maybe grab a little more yellow on this one. And you can start to just wash in some of the color here. Right here is just like this light green mountain part. Obviously here it starts to get into the orange. Just kind of get, grab some water and get real loose with it in the beginning. See? Grabbing a little more yellow. Ooh, that's too much yellow. Sometimes you can go overboard. <laughs> Get a little more medium green here. Now you can see like these little bumps of darker color. This is where you can bleed in some wet on wet. There's even some brown over in here. You can take some umber. Just kind of bleed it in here. Now remember, if you're out in plain air, you don't have to be like perfect. You know, if you're in your studio, you can be a little more you know, you can spend more time. Obviously, you don't. sometimes you don't have much time if you're out in plain air. So I'm grabbing some of the darker color. It's pretty wet. If it was less wet, so I'm grabbing that blue and the yellow right here, a little bit of brown, minimal water, like hardly any, you can just barely move it, it's like butter. And then over here, it's loose like coffee tea. See, so you can play around and see how it, starts to bleed in some of the areas. Now it's obviously much darker than that first wash, so you want to kind of balance the two and add a medium green. And that's in between the two of them. Again, and mine's a little bit wet, so I'm adding a little more pigment, make it thin, you know, thicker, so it won't bleed as much. So there we go. We're just kind of taking the tip of this brush, just kind of tapping. I know, me and my tippy taps, but <laughs> What else do you do? You're kind of just hitting it to getting that that look. And see how it's kind of thicker. It was like there was any paint over here, so it didn't really bleed as much. If it's really thick, it's hardly going to bleed. So you see some light areas shining here and some dark areas. Just going to kind of bleed those right here. And then you're going to tap above it a little bit. So it kind of leaves like that little halo you see in the photograph. I'm going to grab a little bit darker, thicker paint. I'm just taking my time because I can because I'm in the studio. But if you were out and doing plain air, you might have to go a little bit faster. So you're just grabbing a little darker color. It's good to have them all kind of mixed up, ready to go. And some brown. Tapping in some brown. It might have dried. You might have to go back in and add a little more color. Just take your time with it. Even in plain air, if you're doing this in plain air, um, it goes by pretty fast. See, I'm just tippy tapping all those colors. And then here, it just starts to get really into those greens and oranges. But right now, we're just going to still concentrate on the greens. We've got some medium green happening here, some greens and oranges in between really deep dark ones over in here. But you still want to start off lighter. And down here, we would do orange, the blooms, and then paint the greens in between them. Okay, so here I'm just going to tippy tap some of the dark color again. Squint your eye. It's kind of like the best way to figure out where your darks go and your lights go. Get that area in there. Okay, and then we have some gray, brown. Taking some burnt umber and some paints gray and the medium green. And you can see it kind of happening here, and it's a lot of orange over in here. Maybe a little bit lighter with some yellow. A 
if you get too much paint, you just tap back onto your paper towel or your towel, whatever you have that's convenient. See, now I'm just going to do some of the green edges here. Try not to hit that one so much. It is a little darker here than here. So I'll grab some browns and some greens and make this one a little bit darker. It gets a little dark over in here. So I was just tapping. So now we can start to play with some of the oranges. We'll do this in the darker greens. We'll do the oranges first. So what you want to do is the orange color first and then tap around it. So this one's really bright. This this uh <laughs> the brilliant orange. You could tone it down a little bit by adding some yellow. Even that's really bright. But the color is really bright in here. So just start to take that color and you can just do this taps like I said. You want to kind of make it different than that. You want to just have a flat color go on the side like this. Be careful where you're putting the paint though. Because we have that purple kind of coming in here. And see this mountain has a lot of orange. This is what I'm doing here. And then I'm doing the orange one down here. So I have the dark green going in here. So I did the orange like this. And then you can tap the green on top. Or you could just sit there and do a little tappy taps. So you can make yourself crazy. Um, same thing with this one. And it doesn't have to be perfect. See, so it's more like a flat surface. I'm going to add a little purple. Squint your eye. The purple's kind of over here. So I've got the orange kind of over in here. You can get some deeper orange color if you want. super bloom. So I'm going to take that purple that I mixed up. See how I'm tapping next to the color? Grabbing the purple. I need to be a little bit looser. It was too stiff. Now it starts to bleed in the orange. It might turn a little brown. We'll see. I'm playing around with the purple. And maybe we can grab some pink color too. Just tippy tapping the purple in there. It's just a little bit of it. There isn't much of it, but you can see it. I'm going to go back to the orange again. I'm going to add some yellow orange down here. While this orange is still damp, see, just tapping that. And you're kind of doing that like all the places. So here, up in here, we have that little mountain area. And then we have all these bright yellow, orange kind of color here. And here, I'm tapping in a little more deeper orange. And then you can grab some of your greens. Start to play around with getting those in there. It's good to have the colors, like I said, all mixed up already. Just doesn't have to be perfect. So now I'm going to get a little more aggressive. You know, I'm going to be painting it look faster and adding a little of the blooms. You can see here there's like deeper deep green, just going a little bit faster. Adding in some of those dark colors. You can add a little bit of the orange. You would have to do the orange first, right? because otherwise it's going to bleed in. It's going to turn like this ugly, muddy color. And one way to do it is, like I said, hold on its side, kind of just get that color. Even if it's thick and dry brush, just go in here and throw in that orange, super bloom color that you see. I go a little fast, a little bit red on this one. But it's mostly this bright orange. I just go up in here. Going pretty fast. And if you squint your eye, you can see where all the orange is. It's kind of going in here. I think the dry brush really helps. I'm just 
just going on the side. And I'll add in the green too. It's good to squint your eye and see where all the orange is. It's that bright yellow orange. Now, if it's thicker paint, you can go right over that green, like I just did there. And I'm, mine's not going to look exactly like the picture, it's going to have the feeling of it. Just imagine without the girl in front of there. <laughs> going over there just kind of filling it all in and you see it's funny because like my mountain because I freehand it kind of drew in here more than you see and the purple is kind of down here but it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be perfect and exact like the photograph and that's what I'm trying to tell you don't make it seem like you have to make everything perfect like the photograph People get bogged down on photographs. It should just be a feeling. Grabbing that yellow. See, just very thick dry brush kind of colors. And then we can start to bleed in some of the greens and deeper greens. And even grab some more yellow here. And this brush does really well with all that dry brush. And now I'll go do the same thing with the greens. I'll play around with the medium green. There isn't any really green in here, but you can tap in a little bit. The little spaces that I left. Put a little bit of green in there. Definitely a lot of darker green up top. Browns. Squint your eye to find those crevices and of course really a lot darker green up here getting that deep dark green in some of these areas can add some browns Green up in here. But oh no, the brush is fantastic. It really holds well. It's doing what its job is meant to do. Sometimes you get these travel brushes and they're kind of crappy. I really like this one. I haven't used the little ones yet. I'm mostly concentrating on this number 10 because like I like to paint with bigger brushes. You can try the other ones. I'm going to go in here and just loosely stick this in here so now we're forming our little mountains kind of bled too much down in here <laughs> it happens don't freak out about things like that just kind of wiggle see I'm just wiggling it and holding it on its side getting those dark areas in Playing around with this dark area here. It's in green. So just a, this is like what a field study would look like. It doesn't have to be perfect. You would just have it, the essence of like what it would look like. Getting some darker color again. It's really thick. Going right on top so it won't bleed as much and it won't be um, a problem buckling. If you want to use a smaller brush, try those. This is the number eight. So I might grab for the bottom area. Let's just get into that. You look like you can see red in there and orange. You can zoom in. Red or orange. So you would take, I have a cadmium red deep, I mean, excuse me, light, and I have the orange color. You would probably paint the orange in first. Just do like these little tappies, taps. They're like V's for poppies. So just paint like little V's. 
but maybe a little scoopy V. <laughs> now that bigger clusters in the front and smaller. And you have the little ones back here. So you get the orange in there, and we're just going to put a little side of red in there. So these would be bigger because they're kind of in the front, in the foreground. In the background, they're going to be much smaller. You can paint those little poppies that look like little V's if you want. Scoopy V's. And notice how I'm doing that first. And then these ones back here are more yellow. And then just go in here and do the yellows. You can see some nice bright yellow ones. Same thing here. I'm just kind of like moving the brush around really quick. The yellow paint. And then I'm going to grab the green. But before they do that, I'm going to grab the red. Okay, I'm in red deep. I mean, excuse me, light. You see you have the two-tone. And maybe it's a little more yellow, orange, and then the red. So here's the uh, yellow, orange. Oops, looks orange, orange. <laughs> ah! You know, I had taxes done yesterday. That was a nightmare. So I'm like, trying to recoup. So there's the yellow. And then just grab the red. And you have that kind of look. You see in the photograph. I'm just going to grab a little more red. I'm just grabbing it to like one side or like one the bottom. And then back here too. A few back here that have that red. And then you just take your brush. You can do the 10, whatever color. Get, grab some greens. And just start laying them in. And I just would go like, you can start to do stems. Gonna get a nice medium green here. See, go like this. And as you're slowly doing that next to each other, it will blend into green within green. You can get some darker tones in there. That's how you kind of build the grasses. You want to go a little faster. You can kind of push in the green here in between. And then as it's dried, you go back in and add nice, nice little stems. You're just going to fill in in between here. Just take your time going around the little blooms. You would do the blooms first. That's how you don't get this ugly, muddy mess. And then you just kind of tap in between. And leave some white spaces. The key is to leave some white spaces, get those blooms in, and then you can tap in. Sometimes you can go over it with really thick paint, but sometimes you don't. You mess up too much because you don't add in. And then I'm going to go up and add some of my greens in here. Some light greens really quickly. Squint your eye. You can see some of the greens happening all around here. In this mountain that had like the greens in between, you can just again start tapping that. There's less orange in this section. So I just kind of go really fast and move the green around. Like I said, it's not supposed to be perfect. It's just an interpretation of how it would look. Get that dark green in there and down in here. And obviously a really dark green in here. And these little caverns. Still using the eight here. And then for the, um, the mountain part, way in the back, just take your purple. It's like a purpley brown color. I would just make it a little brighter. You can take purple. I had, I had some green on my brush, so it's kind of making it brown. That's kind of perfect. It needs to be a little bit darker, so maybe I'll add some blue. It's too light. So I'll take some ultramarine blue, some hands gray, blue, gray. If you want it darker than that, it looks a little too it looks a little too light. Let's play around with that, adding that darker. Makes a little more sense. Maybe the sky should have been a little bit lighter. But when you're out in the field, sometimes everything doesn't go your way. You're just getting the essence of it, like I said. And you can take a photograph 
and you would have everything you need to go back in later to do something perfect. And here I'm just like, like I said, I did the orange areas. I'm just going to kind of bleed in some of the greens, getting rid of some of that white. Start off always light. You can always go darker. Do not go full tilt to the dark. See how I went? I started light and I'll go in and add darker tones. If you go in too, go in too early with all that light, you can be in trouble. And you can take that orange yellow paint, it's pretty thick, and go right on top. See? Those areas. And you know, see? You got the interpretation of it. And I'll go in and I'm going to grab my medium darker greens as this dries and I'll start to make my little stems. See? With the number eight. What's great about the Aqua Leap brushes? The points. Great points. Just go in here and do your little stems for all your little puppies. Puppies. I mean, it's so amazing what they look like. People's photographs. I, I feel like I should have just went to, flown out to California and just checked it out. And get some of this dark tones. And you take the little, you take the br smaller brushes for all your little details. That's what they're really good for. Just filling in those nooks and crannies. And this will get even darker still over here and back here and here. See, we're going to kind of get it. We're going to kind of build that dark tone. Some of those colors. You can't go for it all at once because then it becomes a problem. Do, do, do. Get a little darker in some areas around the poppies, medium green and other areas. You just go through. Take your time with the little stems. You can kind of fill it in like this too if you want to do that. Fill in the color, fill in the stems. And that's that. Take your time, enjoy. If you're traveling, Really, I'm telling you, I couldn't recommend 10 out of 10 for these brushes, in my opinion. You know, go back in here and add some darker values in some of these areas, especially back here. Up in here, so this one's really dark. You just gotta squint your eye, and it really helps when you're doing some things with darker tones. It just helps a lot. And here, you wanna get a mass area dark just kind of hold it on its side things like that mine's a little too bright maybe I would add some values of browns and deeper colors to my greens you know but it doesn't matter as long as you're having fun painting who cares I mean there are no rules mine's not gonna be perfect like the photograph and I don't intend to make it perfect like the photograph it's just not how I paint Obviously, obviously you know this by now if you're following me. So that's that. Squint your eye, like I said, and you can just come in here and you just add the colors that you think make sense. So 10 out of 10 for these brushes. Really like them. Um, if you're thinking about uh, or on the fence about getting them, getting them, get them. I'm not doing anything sponsored with Princeton, so I just like them. Just wanted to share what I'm doing, what I'm looking at. I've been buying a lot of um, supplies to travel with overseas, and I'll be sharing them slowly as I, well, some of them I haven't. So I'll be sharing some of them. I haven't shared my easel that I bought. All right, here we go. That's my interpretation of the Super Bloom for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, like I said, if you're really interested in travel brushes, these are great. Take care and I'll speak to you soon.